Has God been good to anybody in this room today? Can we give God a great praise tonight? He's been so good. He's been so kind and wonderful and generous in everything. Brother Jason, I can't help but praise him. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, not just my soul cries out, but my mouth has to. I've got to praise him. Amen. Greet somebody nearby. Tell them it's great to see them in the house of God today. And let's begin this service with praise on our hearts and lips. Praise God. Yeah. We've come to this house again to lift every voice and sing. But no one can praise you for me. With one mind and one accord, we exalt your name, O oh Lord. But no one can praise you for me. And so with my hands held high and my face to the sky, I will praise with all that I have. I've come to give you the praise that no other voice can raise, cause no one else can praise you for me. So I'm here to worship you now, till my final breath I bow, from this moment through eternity, no one can praise you for me. Tell how you feel today. I've got to praise you, oh God. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know he gave me a song.
that testify. Covenant keeping God. You've been faithful, God, through the years. Yahweh. You've been faithful through the tears. Faithful to the promise. Keeping God. You've been faithful to the people of the promise. You are covenant keeping God. When I look back over my life and I think things over, Yahweh, you've been faithful. Covenant keeping God. You'll be faithful again. Yes, you will, God. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. Let's give the Lord praise tonight. Hallelujah. To the Lord of glory. Be all honor and praise. We lift you up tonight, Jesus. Lord, we come with great gratitude. Great gratitude in our hearts. Thank you for the miracle of the promise. Thank you for the miracle of the promise, Lord. Thank you for 12 great years here in this community. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise God. Amen, amen. Thank you, Brother Ben. Thank you, the praise team and praise band. We appreciate them so very much coming out early today to practice. Before you sit down tonight, we want to go before the Lord in prayer. And we're just going to receive your prayer request by, by an uplifted hand. If you have a need tonight, would you... Show that God bless all of you. Amen. Let's pray together for these needs and this service. Father, we love you so very much. We thank you abundantly, God, for all the blessings of this life. Thank you for a beautiful week. Thank you for a beautiful weekend, God, as we celebrate fathers and we celebrate our anniversary. Lord, we give you all the praise, Lord, that we understand how to give you from our hearts from our minds and from our mouths. Lord, as we stand here tonight, we pray in the mighty, matchless name of Jesus. Lord, no matter what the prayer request is, God, we know that you're more than enough. You're more than able, God, and we trust you completely. We trust you with our souls. We certainly trust you with circumstances. Now, Lord, we pray for the remainder of this service. God, we pray for Brother Traxel. Anoint him as he ministers to us. Anoint our ears to hear, God. Just bless abundantly in this house tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Let's give him another praise. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you so much. It's because of you, God, that we are here. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. First of all, let me thank all of you for being here tonight to help us celebrate on a Saturday night. We know that it's an, uh, a, a not a normal night for us to be here, but it's a special time of year where we're celebrating what God has done. There's so many stories that we could tell how God opened doors and things transpired that allowed us to be in the building up above us and then also for God to bless us with this sanctuary. And I'll let, leave those things to Brother Lovelace. But I want to welcome our great friends from Clawson, Michigan, the Traxels, Brother Stephen and Sister Dana and their children. They pastor a wonderful church, Grace Apostolic. What a great, great Time. We were there with them a few weeks ago and absolutely fell in love with your church. And we enjoyed being with them so much. And they're great, great friends of ours and, and brother and sister Lovelace. And we just welcome them tonight. Would you welcome our pastor right now as he comes to greet you in Jesus' name? Let's give the Lord a big hand clap of praise. He's worthy of the praise, honor, and glory. Amen. Clap your hands, all you people. Amen. If I said clap your hands, all you people, it wouldn't be quite the as big an effort tonight as it is on Sunday. I don't know where all our folks are, but I'm glad to be here. That's, I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord on this Saturday evening. And I'm so glad to see each and every one of you that are here today. Happy 12th anniversary. I, I'm, I can't believe that it's been that long. And uh, as I've uh, told different ones, uh, 
happy 12th. Some say, well, I've been here for seven of it. And others say, well, I've been here for five of it. I've been here for nine. Uh, for however long you've been here, maybe it's just been a few weeks or a few months or several years or the whole time. We are so thankful for each and every one of you, the faithful saints of God that have made the promise all that it is. And God is doing great, great things among us. Uh, we're not going to do an offering tonight. We, we just want to... Uh, get right to the preaching as soon as we can so Brother Ben's going to come back and lead us in some praise and some worship I'm looking forward to hearing from the man of God here in just a few moments, aren't you? put your hands back together, let's give the Lord a praise as Brother Ben comes back to lead us in worship praise God then I'm going to change the songs so we're going to sing this one first, Sister Sherry Sister Rachel, let's worship God.
Stand back up if you want to. I'll stand if you do. Uh, Sister Sherry, give me a key of C. I've been thinking about this song. And uh, if I sing this song, Sister Barbara, today and not cry, it'll be the first time. Because I'll share these lyrics with people at work or wherever. And I'll cry just talking about them. Um, I just... When God gave this song, it's, it's my testimony, and I think it's appropriate for our anniversary service. Sister Jenny, God's been good, better than I deserve, better than I deserve. And we oftentimes will praise Him for the big things, and if God didn't heal this or God didn't shake this foundation to the core and stop the issue that, that I want Him to stop, you know, it's like the big testimonies are all we want to give God the greatest praise for. And this song is just saying I'm thankful for all the things. I won't, I won't be able to do it today either because I'm already about to go. All right. For all the nights spent waiting by the phone On the troubling news that never seemed to come the safety of my family day to day it is you faithfully has made a way and all the times that evil men kept passing by and for the tears in my eyes never had to cry and the days that my feet never had to run. Lord, for all the things I never knew you'd done. Oh, I just want to thank you for the wrongs that went right. And I'll celebrate the victories that came without a fight. wasn't more than I could bear and when my answer came even before the prayer and when my consequences never had to come oh for all the things I never knew you'd done oh God I just want to thank you for Thank God. And I'll tell a 
celebrate the victory that came without a fight. And I'm grateful for the night when rest was so easy to come. Oh, I praise you, Lord, for all the things I didn't know you done. Yeah, my hallelujah has no hesitation. And this hallelujah has no expectation. But I'll offer you this praise, dear Lord, for all the things that I knew and didn't know. And I'll celebrate the victories that came without a fight. And I'm grateful for the nights when rest was so easy to come. Oh, I praise you, Lord, for all the things I didn't know you done. Yeah, I praise you, Lord. Praise our God today. He's so good. Pastor Love us. Oh, come on. Let's give the Lord some praise. We've got so much that we know He's done. Oh, but so many things that we don't even know the Lord's done. Amen. Would you stand with us? Thank you, Brother Ben. Brother Ben Christian wrote that song. Beautiful, beautiful song. Somebody needs to get that out on the radio somehow or another. Uh, awesome, awesome song, Brother Ben. I, uh, the older I get, the more I appreciate people with a kind spirit. You know, I, I that's right, they're underrated. And I said this, we, I did a one call yesterday to encourage Everyone to be here in Brother Traxel. One of the things I said was, you're going to love Brother Traxel. He has a sweet spirit. He's a kind spirit. And that's, that's what I've uh, taken from him from the moment I met him. He's just a kind, uh, you hate to say that about another man, but he's a, he's a sweet man. Uh, uh, <laughs> but we, we are so thankful for him and his family. Got to meet his wife uh, at our uh, Missions America meeting uh, a few years ago and just so thankful his children they're basketball players you know I love them uh, the, the, the biggest one there's a football player but uh, we just love and appreciate this family so much and I, as I was praying today I said Lord not by might as I was praying for Brother Traxel not by might nor by power but by your spirit God stand up in that man of God today and speak to our church. And so I expect no less than God's anointing to rest on this man of God as he comes to minister to our church today. Would you put your hands together and welcome Brother Traxel as he comes to minister God's word. Amen. Can we one more time put your hands together for the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. God, for your goodness and mercy. Come on, where would you be without the Lord's mercy on your life? Thank you, Lord. God, we praise you. We give you a high praise. Come on, oh, clap your hands. All your people shouting to God with a voice of triumph. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah is my anthem. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My praise is my weapon. I thank you, Lord. I worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Amen, amen, amen. So glad for the goodness and mercy of Jesus. He's better to us than we are to ourselves. He's better to us than we are to him. And I'm so thankful for one more time to be in the house of the Lord with all you wonderful folks. You may be seated for a few moments of time. <clears throat> what a wonderful privilege it is that my family has to be here at the Promised Church. I give honor today to Pastor Loveless and his family and this wonderful church and you wonderful saints uh, for allowing me to be here tonight. Uh, so wonderful, uh, Brother uh, Brother Art Schnitzer, who serves as our missions uh, church growth director, wanted me to give a hello to you, uh, Pastor, and congratulations on 12 years of your anniversary here at the Promised Church. Uh, so glad to be here with you, and thank you for the invitation to be part of this 12-year celebration. Uh, statistics say that most ministries uh, that come out of um, professional uh, Bible schools only make it about five years, and they burn out. And so it's so important. One, I congratulate <clears throat> Pastor Loveless for the years of ministry, but it tells you how important it is to pray for your pastor and this family. And so there's, a, there's quite a load on, on the pastor, but there's also, if it weren't for the saints that show up every week, we wouldn't even have a church here in uh, this area. It's, it's, we, we give you folks high honor for being part of the greatest church, amen, in this area. And, um, you know, the Bible says he, he gave us apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Uh, for the equipping and the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. And so uh, just to let each and every one of you know that what we do is not a spectator sport, but all of us are to get, to get involved in winning of souls and reaching this lost world. You have a pastor to help equip you, but the, the ministry is on the saints of the church. And so each of you, uh, when you leave here on a Sunday or whenever you guys have church, realize you guys are going to the mission field. Everywhere you go, you are missionaries and preachers and pastors and ministers. And I know that there's great people here doing just that. And I appreciate the spirit that's in this uh, house today. Again, uh, my honor to be here. I, I love and appreciate my friends, the Vickers. So good to see them again here. Uh, Brother uh, Pastor Vickers uh, preached for us a couple weekends ago and just absolutely blessed our church, our church loved them and having them with us. And I just wish Michigan and Tennessee weren't so far away from each other. It just makes it, you know, a little more difficult to get to see each other. But we, we enjoyed, uh, I've so enjoyed working with uh, uh, Brother Vickers on our Missions America team. He has just been a great, a great help and a great support and a great teammate and a great friend. And so uh, it's, not really been a, it's not really been work. It doesn't feel like work when you get to enjoy it with your friends. So I enjoy uh, him being part of, he's the Southern Regional Director of the Missions America Department, and uh, we are going to be having a, uh, a Southern Regional Conference in, in um, uh, Mississippi at Brother Vasquez's church. Uh, great content's being shared. For anyone that's interested in church growth or church planting, we'd love to have you. If you have a burden to do something, some people can't go to Africa or Europe or wherever, but they can go across the street. You can go down, you can go to the next town over and, and start a church there. So uh, there's lots to be done here at home. We know that America is upside down in a major way. But every time things are so chaotic, I know God's getting ready to move in, some, in a great way. So we want to be ready for that. Amen. So glad to have my family here. Glad to have my beautiful wife of 22 years here with me. I know we don't look old enough, Brother Lovelace, but with 22 years of marriage here. We just married when we were babies. We got married. And uh, so glad to have my three children here with me. Being, being that we travel so much with the Department of uh, Missions America, we don't often get a chance to take our children with us, and so it's always a uh, great, great time for me to have my kids with me uh, sleeping in the car while I drive the whole way. So it's really good to have them in the back seat while I'm driving, uh, just knowing they're there with me. <laughs> so I enjoy my kids, love them very much, and I'm glad they're here uh, in the house of the Lord with me. Amen. Congratulations on 12 years. I have a, a word from the Lord I believe he wants to share with somebody. I want to encourage you today that God's mercy is, is everlasting. His mercy endures forever. Uh, your mistakes, your mishaps, your misfortune when you fall flat on your face uh, doesn't overrun God's mercy and his grace. Amen? But guess what? You made it to the house of God, so because you're here, you're winning, right? That doesn't matter what happened last week or last night or yesterday or even earlier today. You made it to the house of God, so you're winning right now. Amen? Amen. I want to be a winner with Jesus, and I trust God. I trust his mercy completely. So let's turn with, turn, if you would turn with me to the book of Matthew chapter 27, going to the, uh, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 26, and then we'll go to Matthew 27. Matthew 26, ver, starting at verse number 69 through 75.
Verse 69 says, Now Peter sat without the palace, and a damsel came unto him, saying, Thou also wast with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. And when he was gone out into the porch, another maid saw him and said unto them that were there, This fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. And again, he denied with an oath, I do not know the man. And after a while came unto him they that stood by and said to Peter, Surely thou also art one of them, for thy speech bereath thee. Then began he to curse and to swear. Isn't it amazing? That's why we don't curse and swear, folks. Because when you, when you talk, talk off color language, you, you deny who you're with. You deny Jesus when you talk that way. So he had, to, he had to start cussing a little bit and swearing to just prove to them I'm not one of his because any disciple wouldn't talk that way. But he began to curse and swear and I know not the man, and immediately the, the cock crew, and Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now Matthew chapter 27, verse number 3. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, what is this that to us? See thou to that. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple. Now I want you to see the, the last part of this verse. And departed and went and hanged himself. He threw down the money from the temple. And the next breath the writer writes, he went and hung himself on a tree. Two, re, two very remorseful men that denied their friend Jesus. But each of them had a different outcome of the end of their life. Each of them was guilty, but each of them could have been forgiven. One man chose to end it all before he could see the rest of the story, and the other man just stuck around to see that grace was good enough for him. And I want to talk to you as I feel the Holy Ghost tonight moving in this house already. I want to talk to you on the subject, the courage to stick around. So, so Sometimes you just have to have courage just to stick around. You don't feel like it. You, 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 feel like, you feel like a jerk. You feel like you just made a major mistake. But instead of giving up and running out on God, why don't you just trust the grace of God that said, you know what, I'm just going to stick around here a little, a little while and see the mercy of Jesus Christ on my life. Amen. Anybody fall flat on your face before you realize, hey, I don't deserve it. Guess what? Nobody deserves it. But you just got to have courage to stick around and let the Lord repair what was broken in your life. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I want courage tonight to stick around. I want the courage tonight to stick around. Amen? Everyone say amen to the reading of the word. You may be seeing the name of the Lord Jesus. There is something to be said about those who are willing to just stick around. They might not be the brightest, and they might not have the greatest of talent, but they're always there. They just stick around. There's power in that, you know. There's opportunity in those that are willing just to be there, just to stick around. In fact, sometimes you look at a Look at some of the men in the church, and the reason that you're even married is because you just stuck around. After all the denials, you know, every time, every time your wife said no, finally you just stuck around long enough, and she looked at you one more time, you're like, you know what, I can give this guy a shot, you know. So now you married a beautiful woman out of, out of your league because you just stuck around a little bit, you know, you just kind of stuck around there. Some of the, now I'm going to get ready to go carnal here, hopefully, please forgive me, uh, Pastor, you can clean this up later. Some of the greatest comeback stories in sports are rarely seen by the masses because oftentimes when scores get out of whack and it's a far gone conclusion that the end is etched in stone. We know how the end of the game is going to happen because we see the score. It's, 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 it's uneven. We know that it's not going to happen tonight. Tonight's not our night. Oftentimes, the majority of fans who are really what they would call fair weather fans are the ones that stop cheering when their team is down, especially late in the game. And so they leave with an inning left. 
They paid their money, but they didn't stay for the whole game. They leave with five minutes left on the clock because their team is down by so much. There's no way they can come back now. And so they aren't willing to stick around to watch what they already know to be the fact that their team just didn't have it tonight. Just didn't have the spark, wasn't good enough. So we're gonna, we're gonna beat the traffic. Anyone ever beat the, wanna beat the traffic? You, you wanna beat the traffic. You know, so it's already a for, foregone conclusion. We're done, we're over, we lost out. Let's just, let's just get up and go and just, just leave and not stick around for what we already know is gonna happen. And, and so they take off before the game is over, but the worst sound you can hear when you leave walking to your car is a stadium that just burst out in cheers. <laughs> and you realize, I just messed up. <laughs> that is, you paid the money, you know. I, I told you I'm being a little carnal of sports. I don't know how it is down here, but up north, there's a bunch of carnal people. So I can talk like this. I'm just gonna take, treat it like I'm at home tonight. Is that all right? Okay. So the worst thing you can hear, you walk down the block, you get to your car, all of a sudden just this humongous cheer from a stadium of the fans that just saw something awesome happen and you were already gone, you didn't see it. And so you didn't realize you messed up to watch one of the greatest comeback stories in sports history. Hendon Hooker just threw a touchdown. I can talk about him because he's a lion now, you know, he's... Threw a, threw a bomb, and the Volunteers won the very last play of the game. But you didn't get a chance to experience that end of that game because you didn't just stick around long enough to see what could happen. However, it's them ride-or-die fans. It's those guys that once they get there, they, they keep their backsides glued to that seat until the last whistle blows. And they are often the ones, the few, the remnants, those that are willing to stick around, that get to see the comeback story. They're the ones the next day you got to run home and listen on the radio to hear what you could have seen with your eyes. But because you weren't willing to stick around, you, you didn't get to see it. And so the next day they come in with their, their faces still painted like, I don't even want to hear it. Oh, you, you should have, I don't, I don't want to hear it. Why? Because you didn't think a team could do it. You gave up. You were done. You were over. So you thought, I'm just going to get myself out of here. And you never had the experience of a comeback story. Folks, let me tell you something. When I'm talking about God, sports pale in comparison to the God I serve. Basketball teams, football teams. Any other sports you can think of. If, hey, listen, if we can think about comeback stories in sports, if we can talk about comeback stories in baseball or football, let me tell you about the greatest comeback story in the history of mankind. It was about a God that went to a cross, but three days later, he, he rose to the power of resurrection. Can I tell you tonight, don't you give up in your situation. I'm telling you, there's a comeback story. There is, a, there is a powerful testimony if you just stick around and let God show you what he can do. Come on, somebody. I believe that God's big enough. I believe that mercy can pick me back up. I am not done. I will not give up. I believe in the mercy of Jesus Christ. I'm a ride or die fan with Jesus Christ. I believe that he's in charge of everything. When my life is upside down, guess what? His life is still the same as it always was. The sun's going to come up. The moon's going to come out. I don't care where I'm at. I know that God's still in charge of my situation. Therefore, when I fail and fall flat on my face, I, I'm not giving up on myself. I'm giving up on the God that said, I'm never going to leave you nor forsake you. If you don't stick around, you're not going to give yourself an opportunity to see the glory of God in your situation. Because you didn't stick around long enough to see the end of the story. It's, it's impossible really to truly consider the hurt that both Peter and Judas are feeling 
at the moment of their personal failures. I love the Bible because the Bible doesn't hide the failures of these superheroes that we look at. They're, these aren't men with capes. They're real men with real hurt and real feelings. Judas would be the man that would accept 30 pieces of silver to turn over his friend Jesus at a secluded place. And with a kiss on the cheek, he would betray his Lord. And Peter, though he originally started out in bravery there that night in the gardens, cutting off an ear with a sword in defense of Jesus, quickly he became very uh, insecure of his relationship and connectivity to Jesus. And uh, so thinking that perhaps he would be next to be taken captive, Peter feared his own persecution. Therefore, while standing outside of the judgment seat there, while Jesus was on the inside with John, Peter is recognized as a follower of Jesus Christ. But quickly, just as Jesus said he would do, Peter denies even knowing Jesus. And before the rooster would crow, Peter denies Jesus three times. Now, if we're honest with ourselves, we could all step into the shoes and say we've been there also. In our walk with Jesus, we often ridicule Judas for being the betrayer. But how often do we ourselves sell pieces of Jesus away so that we can enjoy what the flesh wants without any conviction at all? How many of us, whether in our actions or in our words or lifestyle, could relate to Peter when someone calls us out for being apostolic that we have not been living the way we should, so in a, so in a way we kind of brush off, well, I'm not really cra that crazy. I, just, I, I love Jesus, I pat a cake, but, but your lifestyle is kind of denying the fact that you have any real relationship with Jesus. And so a power-packed, apostolic, Holy Ghost-filled person can go to work and they can just act like a watered-down regular Christian, like, Listen, you're not a regular Christian. I'm sorry to break the news to you. You're not regular. You're, you're, you've got the Holy Ghost inside you. So you can't just, you can't just meld with everybody and say, "Well, I'm just kind of one of these." You can't do that. But how often do we d deny our own identity of who we really are? So before we judge these men for what they've done, let's first consider our actions that we sometimes do on a regular basis in our own walk with Jesus Christ. It's interesting to note in, our, in the Word of God that I read that. The Bible includes both Peter's denial and Judas' experience at the very same place in Scripture. In just a few verses, we see the failure of both men. But we also see a very different ending. I will say this about Judas. Judas, when he saw that his Lord was condemned... When he saw that Jesus wasn't just going to get away this time like he'd done every other time. When Judas saw this is really the real thing. This is not just another moment. This is not just another escape attempt by Jesus. But he realized that he was condemned. That he at least had the gumption to go back into the temple. He at least had the courage to go back to those men and say, I was wrong. I've sinned, I have betrayed innocent blood. And verse 5 tells us so much in one statement. Judas cast down the pieces of silver and went out the very next moment and hung himself on a tree. At that point in his life, his regret was so great that his only option that he thought he had was, I'm going to end it all right now. Over the times I've read that story of Judas and to see where he ends up in history, I often wish I could teleport myself somehow back in time to where Judas is gathering his rope, where Judas is putting his stuff in order where Judas is maybe writing a letter to those that he would that would miss him all that that would he no longer come back. If I could simply somehow meet him in the trail, if I could somehow just cut him off before he gets to that tree to end it all, if I could just if I could just grab him by the shoulders, I would tell him, wait, Judas. Judas, you don't have to do this. 
This is not the end of the story. See, Judas, what you don't know, I've come from a long way away, and I can tell you, I've read the whole book, and I can tell you, this is not the end of the story. Listen, Judas, it might not look good right now, but just give it three days. There is a Sunday coming. Resurrection's going to happen. Jesus is not going to remain dead in the tomb. But if you're going to see it, you got to stick around. If you're going to see the glory of the resurrection, you got to stick around for it. Judas, all you see is your failures. All you see are the things you've done wrong. But I'm telling you, there is resurrection coming, and it's going to absolutely blow your mind. But if you put that rope around that limb, if you go to that tree, Judas, you're never going to see the rest of the story. Because you quit too soon, and you never saw the glorious finish of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So what does Judas do with his failure? He stops his own life because he he can't see the rest of the story. He can't see it. And I've come to tell someone here today, those of you that perhaps you're you're a repeat offender, perhaps you prayed over and over again, And you feel I've fallen one more time. I just can't do it. I've come to tell you that quitting when things get bad robs God of his glory in your life. If you quit because you fall down, you are going to mitigate and ruin the greatest testimony you could ever give someone else. What is that? Hey, I fell flat on my face. I I thought it was all over, but guess what? I serve a Jesus whose mercy is new every morning. As bad as my fall was, God's grace is greater. And I just stuck around. I just went to church one more time, Pastor Loveless. I said I wouldn't do it any, anymore. I said that I can't do it, man. Those people are so good. Those people are so holy. I'm so dirty. I'm so, if they knew the things I got involved in. But, you, but someone just said, come on, just come to church. And you said, just maybe one more time. One more time, and it required, took a man from Clawson, Michigan, to tell you one more time, your sin is not final. Your sin is not your identity, but you are identified in Christ Jesus, the risen Savior. And what I've come to tell you is this, you've come to the right place because mercy is available. Grace is available. You can get back up. You can start again. Why? Because God's mercy is everlasting. And you just got to stick around long enough to experience his glory. See, the word of God is already settled. The word of God is forever written. The Bible says where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. Where sin abounds, grace does much more. That's forever settled. When the earth crumbles, when society ceases to exist, when governments crumble and are burned in fire, guess what remains? The Word of God. He wrote it forever, settled, doesn't change. I don't care what year it is. If it was written back when it was, it's still the same today. And the Word of God says where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. I'm so glad it says it like that. That means where sin abounds, it makes a bound, it jumps. Boom. Wherever sin ends up, that's where grace begins. Where sin abounds, grace takes over from there. So that means as great as your failure is, there's always 
as, as, as worse as bad as your sin is. Uh, there's always grace beyond that uh, to cover your worst failure. I'm telling you, you got to start looking yourself in the mirror uh, and say, I've been redeemed uh, by the blood of the Lamb. Uh, I'm going to keep on serving God. Uh, I'm going to keep on living for Jesus because where sin abounds, grace does much more. But too often, we don't live like that. We switch those words around. And we think in our mind, where grace abounds, sin does much more abound. You, you say, well, what do you mean, Brother Traxel? I'm telling you this. We look at ourselves that have failed too many times. Grace has ran out. What you're saying is you're reversing the word of God and you added the word of God, and that's not a good thing. What you're saying is, I've fallen three times and the Lord forgave me, but the fifth time, now that's just, that's too much sin for God's grace because you live like where grace abounds, sin extends, no, no, the word of God says anywhere where you are right now, the worst thing you could get involved in, there is enough grace if you would just one more time trust the mercy of, listen, I'm not talking about greasy grace here. I'm not talking about, well, I'll just do whatever I want to do in sin and, you know, I'll do whatever I want because God's great. No, no, I'm not talking about that. But I'm talking about if you want to live holy and you want to live proper, but your flesh sometimes gets the best of you, let me tell you, you keep coming to this sweet church. You keep coming and hearing the preacher preach. You keep coming giving God worship. I'm telling you, at the end of your failure, you will find a master that's full of mercy and he will just say, come on, let's get going. Come on, let's keep walking. Walking. Why? Because you stuck around long enough to experience the glory of Jesus Christ. I do not believe that Judas's face fate was sealed. I do not believe that God created Judas just to deny Jesus. And then let him rot in hell for eternity. In fact, if you remember, during the, 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 the supper with his disciples, the Lord said, I, I can't wait to eat this again with you. He was talking to all of them. Everyone at the table had the opportunity to eat with him in the last supper. That included Judas, yes, the one that had betrayed his Lord. But let's look at Luke chapter number 24. Let's go there with me. Luke chapter 24, verse 44. It says, this is after the resurrection. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. They still have no idea what he's talking about. They still have. They're like lost. They have no idea what he's been saying. They're lost. And then it says, then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and said unto them, thus it is written and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and arise from the dead on the third day. Do you know what he's doing there? He's enlightening them to the big picture. He's showing them, guys, this was all part of my plan. You were boo-hooing. You were, you know, wringing your hands. You were nervous. You were upset. But this all had to be for a reason that, that the world might be saved through my blood. So he's revealing to them secrets they did not know. They did not know that everything that happened to Jesus was part of his plan. Yes, even the betrayal from Judas. Look at the picture here. The disciples have just been enlightened. They now have an understanding that all of this was a part of a bigger plan that they really didn't know anything about. They are now encouraged after they all had forsaken Jesus but now they see him risen. 
Now they can celebrate. Now they can go home and tell their families, hey, we've seen him. He's risen. But one person that's not there is Judas. One person that was not around to be enlightened. One person that decided I'm going to cash in my chips. I'm going to end it all because I've done something so bad that not even Jesus can forgive me of this. When all of them are rejoicing, there is Judas on the tree hanging lifeless because he thought that he had gone too far. He quit too soon. He gave up too quickly. He did not stick around for the rest of the story. He chose his final act to hang himself on a tree, not knowing that Jesus hanging on a tree was done to to relieve those that have committed the worst of sins, even the sin of Judas. Perhaps if he would have just looked at that rope and said, I'm not going to do it. And he would have ran off like Peter and just wept somewhere bitterly by himself and just got it out of his system, you know, just maybe. It's okay to cry and just get it out of your system sometime. Then you come back to the house of God. You don't quit. Okay? Perhaps if you just would have left the rope in the corner and just went somewhere else and just would have had a change of heart at that moment. Perhaps if he would have, if he would have done that, perhaps he could have been where Thomas was, beholding the hands and feet of Jesus. Perhaps if Judas would have just kept on going, it could have been his words instead of Thomas that declared, my Lord and my God. But Judas was absent for it all. But Peter, his ending was different. In his bitterness and in his crying, We're not really sure what Peter does next. We don't know if he entertained the same thing. Who knows? We don't know what Peter thought. In fact, in the next several chapters, Peter kind of goes dark. Think about it. The last thing you hear, he goes out, he weeps bitterly. In the next several chapters, there's no Peter anywhere. He's nowhere to be found. In the next several chapters, Peter It's not seen at the cross. Now you'd think if Peter realized that maybe he was, if he would have spoke up, maybe Jesus wouldn't have gone to the cross. But he did go to the cross. And this is his best friend. You would think Peter would have the gumption to at least go to the cross and say, Lord, I just, I messed up. I just, but Peter's nowhere to be found. When you're, when you've got a best friend and they're, getting ready to pass away, you want to be by their bed. You want, to, you want to be close. You want to let them know, hey, until you take your last breath, man, I'm here with you. And one of his best friends, Peter, is no long, no, nowhere to be seen around the cross. John's there. There's some brave women there, but we got coward little Peter crying in the corner somewhere. Nowhere to be found. Surely he would have come to the cross. Jesus died. Who? Who would be brave enough to ask of the body of Jesus to give him a proper burial. Surely Peter would come around. Certainly someone could find his best friend, the one that was so brave, the one that walked on water with Jesus, the one that said, oh, the Christ, the one that was so brave when everything else was just kind of. Nope. Peter wouldn't be brave enough to take down the body of Jesus off the cross. He's, He's still suffering somewhere. We don't know where he's at. Here comes Joseph of Arimathea. And who else? Nicodemus, a Pharisee. They're not afraid. And he's a Pharisee. Here he comes, brave enough to take down the body of Jesus to take him to a proper burial. But Peter's nowhere to be found. You would at least think that Peter would come to pay his last respects, but he's nowhere. He's gone dark. He's off the grid. Early Sunday morning, perhaps Peter, after repenting and saying, Lord, I'm sorry, would say, man, I remember, remember what he said. He said in three days, now I don't know, I, I'm a real idiot, man. I've done some bad stuff, but I'm going to run up to that sepulcher and I'm just going to lay there until I see it happen. I'm going to be the first one there. No. You don't see Peter anywhere at the sepulcher. 
You don't see him at the cross. The last thing you see of him is he's denying Jesus, having the ultimate failure that anybody in his shoes could have, and all of a sudden you don't see him anywhere. I'm thinking he's starting to think about, rethink his ministry. I, I'm really thinking that he's going to go to a different different part of Galilee and start his new fishing tour on the other side of the lake somewhere and just get it all. Uh, you know, I can't get, I can't come back from this. I can, this is too much. I've I've hurt my Lord. I, I there, there's no redemption from this. But I love Mark chapter 16. Let's go to Mark chapter 16. This is when the ladies had come to the tomb of Jesus. And um, they, all, they don't see Jesus' body there. They see two angels. And Mark 16, verse number 6 says, And he saith unto them, Be not affrighted. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. Now, some of you know where I'm going, but some of you may never have seen this before. They said, but go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. Peter's nowhere to be found. But he says, listen, if you can find Peter, we need Peter to hear some good news. Peter's getting ready to give it all up. Peter's getting ready to quit. But the Lord's got a message for Peter. I want to make sure if anybody knows it, I want Peter to be the first one to hear that there's a risen Savior that can't wait to reconcile with him again. I'm telling you, God's got a message for somebody. He's calling you by name. He wants you to know you've not gone too far. Do not quit. Do not give up. There's mercy if you just keep going. If you just keep going, please remain standing. Let me tell you something. There's going to be a great glorious scene around the throne. There's going to be people dressed in white singing the praise of God. Hosanna. Holy, holy, holy. The Lord God Almighty which was and is and is to come. The Almighty God. They're going to be wrapped in white. There's going to be people of different nations and different tongues. They're going to be praising the God of the universe. But they're not going to be there because they were perfect. They're not going to be in the choir because every day they got up and they avoided sin in their life and they were the most holy and the most perfect. No, no, no. Those are just people that got back up and realized uh, there's enough mercy for me today uh, that I'm going to get back up and keep serving God. Uh, I'm not going to give up on God. I'm not going to quit now. I'm going to keep praising the Savior. They are simply the ones willing to stick around to discover God's grace is greater than your sin. Judas never encountered an empty tomb. He never experienced Jesus cooking breakfast on the beach. He just didn't stick around long enough to see him. Some of you may feel disconnected. Some of you feel because of your sin, You don't deserve to be here even tonight. Some of you perhaps feel, maybe thinking about your own children that might not be here, should be here. I'm telling you, there's mercy and grace beyond the worst of failures. There's mercy and grace for prodigal sons and daughters. There's mercy and grace for whatever you're going through, I'm telling you. But you just have to stick around and see the glorious finish that God's going to perform in your life. Let me tell you something. The greatest testimonies did not come from easy moments. If it was easy, it wouldn't be a testimony. I love the song. I love the song. And I I love love that, and I'm not going against that song, but I'm telling you, some of the greatest struggles were the struggles you fought through 
and the nights you did cry yourself to sleep on it. Because, because sometimes we just made bad choices. It was nobody else. It was me when I look in the mirror. It's just because of me. But some of the greatest testimonies are realizing that the Lord died for me. And his grace is enough to cover my sin. And I get back up and I dry my tears and I go to church and I get right with God because God is a merciful Savior. And I went to one more altar call. And I said, I'm going to go one more time. I'm going to go down that front one more time. I'm going to tell the devil and God, I mean business. One man said, 80% of success is just showing up. Just going to show up one more time. Artpetty.com says this. People with stick to are the ones who are unflappable in the face of short-term missteps. They are running a marathon fully expecting to face wind and rain and uphill stretches that would force most people to give up long before the finish. But we just keep on going. We just keep on going. Two young men that served with Paul, Demas and John Mark, both had great starts. Both had a wonderful opportunity to be with Paul, to be some of the greatest leaders men of God that you could ever find. Demas, man, he's the superstar. Demas is the one that every pastor wants him to go to his church. A Demas, man, he's just the guy. He's just powerful. Mark, a little wishy-washy, you know. He's the guy that has big dreams, but when the rubber hits the road, he gives up a little too quickly. That was the situation with Mark and Demas. Demas is superstar. Young Mark said, I don't want to do this anymore, Paul. I want to go back home. Okay, Mark, don't ever come with me again. Thankfully, there was an Uncle Barnabas there. I said, I still believe in this kid. I'm going to give him a second shot. So, son of consolation, Barnabas, I think he's still something good in him. And after Barnabas worked with Mark for a little while, Mark came around. But Demas, a flash in the pan, he fell in love with the world. And Paul, in regret, says, Demas have forsaken me, loving this present world. But if you could bring someone with you, bring, bring, bring Mark with you. If you don't mind, bring, bring Mark with you because he's profitable to me. Two young men that had a great start. One fell in love with the world, never be heard of again. But one that quit, quit a little soon, but got back up and said, you know what, I'm going to do this again. Mark came back and Paul says, I see something in him. Though he failed, though he quit on me one time. There's something in his spirit that says, I'm going to keep on going. I'm going to get get back up. I'm going to brush myself off because God has a calling in my life. Let me tell you something. So many young people feel a call of God in their life. And because they fall into sin, they fall into something, they think, God can never use me again. That's a lie from the devil. I'm telling you, God's gifts are without repentance. If he called you, he's still calling you today. Do not think that you've gone too far. Do not think. That because of what you got caught up in, that's too much. No, no. Where sin abounds, grace is there ready to meet you at the end of your sin. But you have to get back up and realize my God still has mercy for me. And I'm going to accept that mercy because no one deserves it. We're not going to get to heaven because we deserve it, folks. No one is. That's why it's called grace. No one is. But the ones that are going to get there, not because they're the most talented, not because they could shoot all the three-pointers for Jesus. They just kept coming to church. They just kept sticking around. Couldn't play any instruments, but they, could, but they just kept on coming. And when the eastern sky parts and God calls his children, they're gonna be there. Why? Because they're in the right place. They just stuck around and said, you know what? I'm not, that, I'm not the best, I'm not the worst, but I trust Jesus and I'm gonna keep on coming to this church because this church has hope, this church preaches the truth, and I'm gonna be part of that number when God calls his people away. Because I love his mercy and his grace today. These altars are going to be open. We would open up these altars. So many churches, so many churches have gone away with altar calls. They no longer do altar calls. They just preach your words and go home, go to a restaurant. But tonight we're going to do an altar call. I believe the Lord gave me this word for somebody. It may not be for everybody, but all of us can draw closer to Jesus. All of us can do a little better. All of us can make that. When you make that step down the altar, you're telling the Lord, I want you in my life. And when you raise your hands, some people may not know this, 
we raise our hands as a sign of surrenderance. If someone puts a gun in your back, Lord, I, I, I surrender. Don't shoot. I surrender. When we put our hands up for Jesus, we're willingly surrendering ourselves to the Lord. I surrender. Here I am, Lord. And when you're surrendering yourself to Jesus, you can repent of your sins. What is that? Lord, I'm sorry for what I've done. I'm sorry for the life I've lived. I want to live right with you. I want to be holy. I want to do right. And then the Bible says you can be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ in water for the remission of your sins. That means when you go down in the, in the name of Jesus Christ in water, all your sins are remitted at that moment in time. And then you can raise your hands and you can be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, evidence of speaking in other tongues. That happens in this church and that can happen this very night. If you want more from the Lord, these altars are open. They're gonna sing, let's come, let's, let's love God. Can we just come down here and just raise our hands and surrender ourselves to the Lord? Can we do that right now? Let's just love Him today. Let's just come down here and thank Him for His grace and His mercy, Lord. God, I don't wanna waste this opportunity, Lord, God. You've given me this opportunity to be here tonight. God, I wanna thank You for another opportunity. I wanna thank You for grace. Come on, let's love Him right now. Oh, thank You. There's nothing too dirty You can make work Watch me in mercy. I am clean. Come on, one more time. One more time. Too dirty. One more time. You can't make worthy. Lord, one more time, Jesus. You wash me in mercy.
I would be hopeless without your goodness. I would be desperate without your love. A slave to the darkness if it was.
What a word. What a word. Wow. Keep on keeping on, y'all. Amen. I've quoted him many times, the great J.H. Osborne. Somebody asked him one day, have you ever thought about quitting? He said, do you mean today? encouraged me through the years if J.H. Osborne thought about quitting we've all thought about quitting along the way amen I'm thankful for messages like we heard today what a message amen it's not just sin that'll make you feel like quitting it's not just sin you can get discouraged. Man, you can, just, you, you can just get tired of being sick all the time. Anxiety. Man, sometimes you just, I've heard people say my life was a whole lot easier when I wasn't trying to serve the Lord. You just get tired of, hey, thank God for miracles, but sometimes you just get tired of needing one all the time. You want to give up and quit. Oh, but there's power and just hanging around. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for that message today. What a message. Amen. Now tomorrow, look around. Look around right now and see who's not here. You be sure and go to every one of them and say, last night you missed it. You missed one of the greatest messages Where's Chrissy? Chrissy, get me a picture of him preaching tonight and get it to me fast because I can't wait to put on Facebook that was one of the greatest messages I ever heard. And if you weren't here, you missed it. Amen. You missed it, you missed it, you missed it. Oh, how good. And let's cut off any recordings where they can't go back and watch it. They just have to miss it. It's what you get for missing it. Oh, that was so good. Wow, what a message. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, come back and be with us tomorrow. Uh, Brother uh, Larry Carter. Everybody say Larry Carter. Man, he, he's going to bless us big, I promise you. He's, he's kind of like David Huff, just a lot like David Huff. If you like David Huff, I promise you're going to be blessed with Larry Carter's ministry tomorrow uh, evening. Well, we're going to get out, go get you something to eat. God bless you. Let's pray and ask God to bless us as we're being dismissed. Heavenly Father, we love you and we are so very thankful for this privilege to have been in your house today celebrating 12 years of the work of God here in this community, this apostolic work of God. We thank you, Lord, for this great truth and we thank you, Lord, for the power that, that stands up in men of God like we witness tonight to hear your word and to be encouraged through the anointing and the preached word of God. I pray you'd go with us and keep us till we come again to celebrate even further on tomorrow. We give you praise, honor, and glory for it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.